Hi, everyone. This is Stephen Demko, Dr. Stephen Demko. I am the owner of Advanced Eye Care Specialist. I am a clinician. I bring you information today uh, in reference to Zeiss. I've been practicing for 33 years. My practice has significantly changed over the past five or six years with the integration of these diagnostic instruments that I'm going to introduce to you today to make you understand what value they have to your practice, to your patients, to your staff, and maybe even to your bottom line. So the one thing that has actually absolutely changed my life is the introduction of the Cirrus back in the day, it was the 5,000, but now I have the new 6,000, as you can see on your screen. One of the reasons that I just updated to this 6,000 about a year ago, and by the way, I bought the second one in the nation because I already knew the value of what you see right there. It's 270% faster in the OCT scans. What that means to me is it's faster acquisition for my staff and the information is crunched that much quicker. So it's presented to me in a format that I can analyze very, very quickly. And particularly the angiography portion of the examinations, 43% faster than previous scans of the angiography. Now, I know everyone has a visual field. Most people do. And if you don't have a visual field test, you need to get a visual field analyzer. And then the next step in your repertoire is to get an OCT. The OCT is the instrument that drives your practice. It picks up more pathology and has a better patient presentation and understanding of who they are in reference to their eye. And with the introduction, when I'm going to introduce you guys into form today, when you put all this together, you'll be a better practitioner and your practice will be happier overall because of that. So your patients... You, your patients, your staff, they deserve this. They deserve the best technology. And Zeiss does provide the best technology. In my office, I have every OCT. I could go through and I could list the brands, but you know that the four major brands, I have the four major brands of OCTs. I don't use those OCTs anymore. At one point, I thought that they had value to me, but now I realize that the OCT from Zeiss, their visual field unit, and particularly their Claris wide field funders for imaging is by far the best in the market. One of the things that is nice about the OCTA, it has a 12 by 12 scan. It provides unparalleled great uh, pictures and imaging. Proven technology, again, to talk about Zeiss for a, a minute, Zeiss has always been the leader. You know, I look at some of the images, uh, some of the OCTs that I've bought and purchased in the past, and they were like one hit wonders. I bought these things. They were good for a year. I tried to look at the research that was done for these instruments, and it just wasn't there. You know, for instance, the uh, visual field unit goes back to 1971, I think, when they first had their first visual field. I've been using a Zeiss visual field since 19. 87 when I graduated from optometry school. I'm probably on my fifth or sixth visual field unit right now and the technology has been proven. Other visual field units, they've come, they've gone, uh, but anytime I want to research, I, I'm big in the research. I'm a clinician, I read everything. I read a journal or two a night, 20 or 30 a, a month. I stay on top of everything. I have every piece of equipment that you could possibly imagine uh, to help me diagnose and treat my patients. And again, it's all because of uh, that OCT that I was talking about. One of the nice things about this is the quality of the image. Here you can see the OCT. This is a 12 millimeter OCT. What you really need to do is you really need to start to look at this. This is the normal image. So once you do this on every one of your patients and you start seeing what normal is, when you don't see this, you're going to say, huh, I wonder why, why that is. And then when you see something like this, you know that that's abnormal. Next, we want to talk about the angiography. Again, once you start doing angiographies, angiographies are the thing that once you start looking at angiography, when you don't see the angiography portion of the exam, you're not going to know what's going on with that patient. This is particularly advantageous for our patients who are hypertensive, diabetics, uh, vascular diseases. You know, you realize in today's world that most people are unhealthy. 
And the only way that you could tell them that they're unhealthy or maybe healthy is by doing an OCT and an OCT with angiography. So when you're looking at an image like you see on the screen right now, this is a perfect image of a normal angiography. And once you start looking at that, you are going to start to understand that these subtle differences take the image on the left. The image on the left so shows some areas of capillary non-perfusion off to the left. You can see some changes in the avascular zone. You can see some microhemes that are present in the um, around the foveal area. And you can see some neovascularization on the right uh, of the disc. So these things are going to alert you that there's subtle changes on, on the left that this person is diabetic. And this person that we took an image of, you can never tell that this person is diabetic by looking at them with your ophthalmoscope. You couldn't look at this with their um, imaging using fundus photography. Uh, there isn't any other thing that I could use other than doing an ERG, which showed me that there was a reduction in the implicit time that this would have been a diabetic patient. Now with the new HD Angio Plus, it just makes it that much easier. Uh, I don't use that that often, but every once in a while, when you really want to get a clear image, you could go to the 8 by HD. So let's talk a little bit about the Claris. So here is the ultra-wide Claris. You can't see most of these things with the your normal ophthalmoscope or your 90 degree or your 78 degree. You know, I was talking to some of the uh, professors uh, down at Will's Eye, and I, we, we were just chatting. And he, they were telling me the number one thing that they have a problem with is getting the residents to actually look in the eye of their patients. Why? Because of this. They have these imaging, uh, these pieces of equipment that do a much better job than we could ever do at um, analyzing macular degeneration. Here you see the advantage of the Claris as opposed to another brand. And then, you know, with the blue filters. And But the biggest thing that you're always going to use this for is diabetes. When you take a picture of a diabetic, there are things that you're going to pick up that you would never pick up before by doing and using the fundus photography. Here's a person that has a diabetic retinopathy. You could see some blot and dot hemorrhages uh, basically in the center near the macula. Next, I'd like to touch on the ease of use of all these instruments. Let's start first with the Claris. You know, we're in a, a pandemic right now. So as far as the COVID situation is in my office, we sat down and we looked at everything very, very hard. We do a lot of testing procedures. And we wanna make sure that it's safe. And we looked at everything very, very carefully. And one thing that we looked at for sure, as we looked at the um, Claris, and we, we wanted to be sure that it's safe for our patients. So one thing that we did is we took the computer screen and we're actually able to move that off to the side. And when the patient presents themselves in the chin rest and the head rest, you know, it's, it's actually a no touch situation. We do not have to touch the, the, the patient. You know, my previous funnest imaging, you had to hold their head up against the, uh, the thing. So that didn't work. We took that machine. We put that away for right now. We didn't use it that much anyway, but now we're, we're primarily using this and just because of that. We don't have to touch the patient's head. We're far enough away from the patient off to the side. We could do all of our imaging uh, very safely and we could even use a mask on the patient. It doesn't interfere with the imaging. It doesn't interfere with fogging up the lenses. It's just one of those things that is makes our life so much easier and uh, it's easy to use. And the same thing we find out with the visual field unit. The visual field unit is also a straight on and you're off 90 degrees to the side. Uh, again, uh, it's a little bit more challenging for the visual field. We are now at the process of waiting about 30 minutes every in between every visual field. Uh, it kind of cuts down our flow a little bit, but we want to make sure that everything is safe and disinfected. And that time that we allow in between visual fields, we feel is necessary to provide the safety. And they are wearing, the, wearing their mask. And the same thing with the OCT. Uh, the OCT, you know, you, the patient is, is head on. You don't have to touch the patient. If you ask them to move, they can move their, pay, their head left to right. And again, we're off to the side or my texture off to the side, and it provides another safety mechanism for all of them. So besides the regular advantages that we're talking about, the Claris, you know, the true color that it provides uh, with all the advantages, the, the safety advantages for, for my staff and for my patients are paramount in, in, in these days. And I think that's one of the, the, the things that uh, everyone needs to know about the use of these uh, instruments.
I really want to show everyone how slick form is. Here's some of the images that we overlaid uh, using form. So you can see an image of the uh, retina with the angiography superimposed. And then you can see the layers of the retina below it. And then here you can see the, again, these uh, images. And this is the first, second, and third uh, image over the past three years of a person that has, um, well, actually this one here is all in the same year of different um, variations of the same eye uh, with the diabetes and how the diabetes is progressing over time. And here's a person with macular degeneration and here's the angiography below the macular degeneration. And you can see down below that this is starting to get a coil neovascular membrane. So what I do in my practice, the only time I send anything to an ophthalmologist or to a retinal specialist is when it needs to be treated. I can manage these patients about 80% of the time, very, very effectively, just using the OCT and the OCT with angiography. And if there's any questions, then I'll send them to the ophthalmologist for fluorescent angiography and for treatment. And a lot of times that we'll be starting to treat these patients based on the angiography portions, because sometimes the fluorescing doesn't pick up the images that I'm seeing with the 6,000. And here's the new Humphrey Visual Field Analyzer 3. We have this in the practice. It has a crystalline lens in it. Uh, you could do a scan in a couple of minutes. It's so much easier for the patients and it's much easier for the staff. The setup is good, the are uh, quick and easy. And uh, here's what I was alluding to before. We, you know, we started this in 1971 or, or I started this in 1971 up until today. And this is all the, the formats that you see. What you really have to understand is Zeiss is the leader in, in this technology. Zeiss is the leader in the OCT. They're the leader in uh, visual field analysis along with Whitefield Funders Photography and their OCT. Up until five or six years ago, I probably had every instrument. And when I switched my whole practice over to Zeiss, uh, it made a remarkable improvement with the use of the form format. So the latest one, here it is, 24-2, it tests you in about two minutes or less. The, it's faster, it's reproducible, and automatic patient alignment on the bottom there. You see that's probably one of the best things that you can use. And again, it does have review software, but the review software form is this on steroids. The uh, multi-center studies, they support the CETA faster. It saves considerable time, most of these things that we talked about already. It uses a 10 central degrees with a 24-C, which is imperative now because a lot of times when you had an advanced glaucoma patient or a glaucoma patient, you're missing those central aspects. Uh, so then you'd have to do a 10-2. Now this incorporates the 10-2 or 10 points of it in the 24-C. And a probably of most value is the guided progression analysis. Here you can see on the bottom left there, they are the changes in the visual field over time. And when you look at those changes down, you see little X's, you see um, triangles, half of triangles and triangles that are clear. And this just explains what they all mean in a relative state. This gets us into the meat of the whole thing. So this is my office in general. This is what I have in my office. Up top, you see uh, the form. Form takes all of these instruments, the Cirrus, the Claris, the Humphrey Visual Field Analyzer, and it incorporates them. So if you wanna look at an image from the OCT and you click on that in any OCT, it's gonna take about 10 to 15 seconds for that image to appear, to, to be analyzed. If you want to see a different image, you got to push it again. It's going to take 10 or 15 seconds again. And then if you want to look at a different year, it's 10 or 15 seconds. And now you're starting to understand. With form, you have a server that crunches all the data. You could take any image and it will crunch it already. And then when you go to form, you press on it, it's there instantaneously. You could look at any image from the day, from the year and scroll through all these things as quick as you could scroll. The images pop up there for you. You could compare year to year, you compare the OCT to the visual field analyzer, you can compare it to the wide fill images on the Claris. It makes your life so much easier. In my office, we have a 55 inch monitor that hangs on the wall. This is what happens in my office. This is the 55 inch screen. This is the initial examination that is provided to me from my uh, OPD scan. It tells me 
the refraction, the wavefront analysis. It tells me uh, Myers, how clear the cornea is. It gives me an indication of higher order aberrations. It actually tell me how well that patient is going to see from a visual standpoint. If there's a change in their glasses, I'll know it. On my other screen over here is all the refractive information and I compare everything that's on here to what the patient has right now. So automatically in one or two glances, I already know if there's gonna be a problem with that patient and if I'm gonna have a problem. So in this particular patient, I saw this, I got back to the notes and I saw real quick, oh, by the way, he has Fuchs dystrophy. So quickly, I just drug down, saw that we had a specular and I pulled the specular up and I looked at the specular. Well, I could see the central aspect of the cornea. There aren't any guttata in the central aspect. They're all, per they're all peripheral guttata. So that is not gonna be um, an issue for me today on this refraction. So I do the refraction and I put some drops in the patient's eyes and I look inside. And what do I see? I see his iris atrophy. So very quickly, I have a, a anterior segment camera and every slit lamp. I take some pictures of this to document it. And the patient's wondering why at night he's getting these weird sensations of glare. So I show him that he has what we would call iris transillumination. He's had, he has a problem uh, with glare because of this. So here you can see I did retro on this, put the light through the pupil. Uh, it's shining back from the retina. Um, and there you can see on the left, the iris atrophy, and then you can see the effects with the transillumination for the, two, for the right eye and the left eye. So the Paris, this patient is diabetic. You can see that he's had panretinal photocoagulation. Now I could click on that image on the top left, and I can make that as big as a 55 inch screen, and I could um, magnify that to almost the nth degree uh, to see if there's any further pathological conditions. And then I could compare that next to the visual field unit, which is right there. And he also was a glaucoma suspect. So you could see in the middle screen to the left that he does have some nerve fiber layer dropout. However, there's no ganglion cell loss. There are some changes in the macular cube indices. He does have some macular thinning on the left eye. And then below, you'll see that uh, we did an ERG. It tells me that he does have a slight decrease in some of the uh, functional aspects of this. And with another click, I pull up his previous ERGs. I compare those. And then I go over down to the 21 line raster. And then here's his images from uh, the previous years compared to what we did uh, the other day for him. And you can see that there's relatively small changes in the amount of drusen. There is changes in the ellipsoid zone, which is of some concern. And I'm wondering, well, I wonder now if this needs treatment. Do I need to send him to a retinal specialist? Should I manage this myself? And here's his angiography. So clearly there's some disruption. Uh, there's some changes. Uh, there is the start of a coral neovascular membrane. Uh, so he's going to get referred for a force and angiography and treatment considerations. Uh, since I've introduced this format, my practice has grown exponentially. It's grown exponentially because my patients love the technology. They appreciate the technology. They look, they, they come in to see, and patients come in from referrals because they, they want to see what we have to offer them. And once you do an OCT on a person, we, how about this? I do a retinal health screening on every person that walks into the office. Right? It's a $39 charge. It's easy to sell. We uh, Probably 90, 95% of our patients will have this procedure done. The other five or 10%, we do anyway. And as I explained to them, I'm gonna do this anyway for you this year, because once you see the value of this next year when you come back, you're gonna to wanna to have it done and you're gonna to wanna to see the comparison. Of those patients that we do of all ages, 25% of them, we find some type of irregularity in the optic nerve or the macular region, which leads us to other testing procedures. And these are the things that drive your practice. So if you find a pathology in an OCT and you're looking at this and understanding that, hey, I don't know why I this nerve fiber layer is thinning. I don't know why this macular is a little bit thickened, thickened. I don't know why these things are happening, but I could certainly tell you if it's a normal variation or if it's a pathological condition. So here we go. I do the OCT. I find an abnormality on the retinal health screening. 
I bring them back for the testing procedures that are appropriate given their symptomology and the clinical presentation. And the first thing that we'll start with, again, is we will redo the OCT, but this time we'll do the OCT more thoroughly with an interpretation and report. Based on the OCT, you'll probably want to do a fundus photo to document if there's any changes in the fundus uh, photography. Now, your fundus photography is now going to be paid for medically because there's a problem. You aren't doing the uh, fundus photo just to document normal. They had an abnormal OCT, and you want to figure out, is there a problem with the nerve fiber layer? Is there a problem with the macular region? The next thing that you'll do is you probably want to do a visual field on these patients. So you'll do a visual field, then the visual field will come back normal or abnormal. So now you're trying to tie all these three things together. And once you start to see one thing happen, you could probably see there's going to be other things that maybe need a little bit more of a, a look so. So in this particular patient, it took me probably oh, of my patient time, uh, let's say 10 minutes to do all this. Back in the day, I used to have paper after paper after computer screen after computer screen after computer screen. And then I would click on this image, try to look at that image, try to understand that image and try to pull this whole thing together. Now everything's right in front of me. I can navigate through this within minutes. The whole examination probably took me 10 minutes. It took me another five minutes to, uh, I use uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking as a dictation device. I dictate this right into the patient's charts and in 15 minutes, he's out the door, so to speak. So, you know, I did a little calculation for you guys. And I, this particular patient that those reimbursements, not the charges, but the reimbursements were almost $500. So you could see the value of all this equipment when it comes to the financial aspect. So again, getting back to our uh, initial thing is how much are these instruments? And I don't look at how much the instruments are. I look at the value of these instruments and what value they have to the practice. So if I looked at my OCT, the uh, lease payment on that thing is about $1,200 a month. And then you might say, well, geez, $1,200 a month, that's a lot of money. But a quick calculation, uh, uh, visual fields, we do four visual fields a day. So uh, today I said to my staff, tell me the amount of visual fields that we did from today for the last year. And that includes COVID and, and all that stuff. So it really cut down on the amount of uh, procedures that we do. We average four a day. So if we did four a day, that averages about a thousand a year. So if you're doing a thousand visual fields a year, you're about going to do a thousand OCTs. You're about going to do a thousand fundus photographies. You're probably going to do half of that in ERGs, uh, VEPs, and all these other diagnostic tests. Yesterday, I was fooling around and I made a clip, which I think you might find very, very interesting. It shows you how the form workplace works in my office. Uh, so let me take you to my practice. This is the most important part of the practice. This is the clinical application of form and how it relates to your practice. When I first walk into my exam room, the first screens that I see are the refractive screens. Here's a picture of the coronal topography, the wavefront, the automated refractor, and how it pertains to the patient and the higher order aberrations. Here I have the refraction and the clinical data on my medical record screen. So I know this patient has fuchs dystrophy, and I know that we usually do a specular on our patients. So I'm just going to go back into today's examination and take a look. And there's the specular. I'm going to click on that, add that to my initial presentation. And if you want to, you can just take it to move it to where you want to. So you have the refractive information. And then there's, there's the, uh, the specular microscopy. Secondly, I do my slit lamp examination. I found some things that I want to document, document and explain to the patient. I did external photos. I loaded them into form. And now I'll take a, a couple clicks and pull up the external photos. If there's something in particular I want to stress to the patient, I'll blow that up and show them that Here's the iris translumination and what's responsible for his symptomology. Next, after the uh, second part of the examination, he was dilated. We went back and we did fundus photos on the patient, electrophysiology testing, ERG, visual field, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all those images up. Again, when I walk into the exam room to see the patient for the second part of the exam, all these images would be here for me. Here's the right eye, here's the left eye, here's the visual field with progression analysis along with the ERG. If I want to look at something just a little bit better, again, I could take one of the images. Here's his left eye and show the patient or examine any part of the anatomy that I want to take a look at a little bit closer. If I want to take a look at the retina itself in the macular region, there's a picture of the 21 line raster. I have his first two scans set up first and then the one from today set up over here. And you can just page through the images to see if there's anything of clinical significance. Real nice is our structure function guided progression analysis. And here I can explain to the patient that here's his last examinations from 2017. And as you can see, he's going in a linear fashion and there's no progression of some concern, an indication of a stable condition and stable disease processes. So now I go back to the original screen. If there's something in particular I want to examine more closely, let's say it's the right eye, I want to take a look at the funnest photo images over the past five or six examinations, I could pull those up with a click of a mouse and you can see from 2017 to today's examination and you can make a comparative um, statement. After we're all done, I would go back to the patient's examination from today and I would click on the permanent information and from here I would do my clinical dictation. I use Dragon, naturally speaking. Uh, this is the data that uh, I have done earlier. I shall, I'll show you how it works today. Our patient is present today and being monitored for macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy, period, clinically. He also has fuchs dystrophy, period. He is symptomatic and does have symptoms as pertains to iris atrophy, period. New paragraph. Dilated from this photopic examination was performed, period of the images are very clear, and the images do show the evidence of diabetic retinopathy, macular degeneration, and previous panretinal photocoagulation. Period this was further analyzed with the following test procedures that were ordered and performed. So as you can see, everything that I'm speaking goes on my dictation. I can click it and it gets transferred into the patient's electronic medical records. I hope you enjoyed this brief but informative portion of the examination as it pertains to form. Back to my favorite slide, my favorite picture. As, you go, as everyone can tell, I'm very, very passionate about what I do. I'm very, very passionate about Zeiss and the instrumentation and the uh, luxury that they presented to me today to present this to you. So uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for attending the presentation. I hope you find it informative.